Ariel Hawani in Vancouver alongside Christoph Soshinsky, who faces Mike Masenzio this Saturday night at UFC 131. And uh, Christoph, great to see you again. And uh, th it's been an interesting week for you, right? Because uh, you're supposed to, this is your third opponent, really. But just a couple days ago, we find out you're fighting Mike Masenzio. What did you think when you found this, uh, this news out? You no, know, it, was, it was definitely a little stressful these last few days. Uh, I got a call from Joe Silva on Monday night, <laughs> right before I leave for Vancouver Tuesday morning. And he tells me he doesn't have an opponent for me. So it was definitely stressful. You know, I basically went from Igor, uh, from from Anthony Peroche to Igor, now to Mike, and I'm just glad that Mike accepted the fight because I know Joe talked to many fighters about getting a last-minute fight, and a lot of them turned me down. So it's, uh, you know, a big thank you to Mike Masenzio for stepping up, going up in weight on top of that, and taking a fight on such short notice. So uh, so my heart's go my heart goes off to him. How close were you to not getting a fight? Um, Joe said it's really tight. He only has one guy, one guy left to call, and that was Mike Masenzio, I believe. So he said he's working his butt off. He he makes sure he, he he told me that he's going to do everything he can to get me a fight. You know, I mean, I, I train my butt off for 15 weeks. Uh, I spend a lot of money on coaching staff, uh, training partners, the gym, the nutrition, all that stuff. So it would have definitely been disappointing if I didn't have a fight after a long 15-week camp like this. This may be a question for Joe, but I'll ask you since we're here. How was Mike Masenzio even on his radar? He wasn't even in the UFC anymore, and he fights at middleweight. How was he the last guy? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Joe, Joe Silva pulls a lot of stuff out of his hat, and, and I greatly appreciate that. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's a diff it's, it was very mentally stressful for me, and I'm sure it was, was for Joe Silva, but I'm very happy that we actually got an opponent. So, uh, Mike, as we mentioned, first fight at lead heavyweight. We don't know what kind of shape he's in. Are you going to look to test his cardio to see really what kind of shape he's in? No, not always. Uh, it, seems that it seems to be the game fight most of the time to take these guys into deep water and see what we can do. I did it with my last opponent, uh, you know, Igor Pokryach, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I did really well. I find my, you know, the fights with Bonner were wars, you know, wars are nutrition. I, I have the gas to go. So if I can take him deep into the second, maybe the third round, I don't think he's going to be able to hang. But the key for me is I'm fighting a wrestler. I haven't fought a wrestler in quite a while. So the key not to get taken down, or if I do, is to get back up on my feet. How comfortable are you if the fight does go to the ground now? Well, you know what? I'm fortunate enough to be training with guys like Mark Munoz every day. He's getting ready for the, you know, he's fighting on the same card. So having training with him, working with me on his rest, on his style of wrestling, helping me, you know, learn how to get up off my back, how to stay on the fence and not get taken down has been working a lot. And uh, I really appreciate his help. And, and, and I'm a lot more confident with my wrestling game. That's for sure. You had a couple of knee scopes, no surgery. How are you feeling? You know what? It's great. You know, it, you know, this MMA sport is so tough on our bodies. Um, you know, it, there, there's not a fight I've ever been in that I haven't felt 100 percent. You know, there's always little injuries. We all have them. But it, my knees feel great. My nose, I can breathe now, which is fantastic. Uh, it, it's, it's nice to have, uh, you know, going into a fight, knowing that you're close, as close to 100 percent as you can possibly be. I always noticed your your back tattoo. It'll, it 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 was it wasn't completed, right? At some point, it, is it finished now? Because I always see it like gradually every fight a little more done. The the detail is done now. The out the the outside of it of my gargoyle is going to be put in a little later this year. Okay. But yeah, it's it's an upset gargoyle coming to life from a, from a statue waking up through a statue. It's something that my wife and I, when we were in Paris, in France, Paris, France, we went to the Notre Dame Cathedral and we see all the gargoyles at the Notre Dame Cathedral. To me, we're protecting the castle. That's like my protector. Will that be it for you after this, or you still got more to go? I believe so. I believe so. You know, I mean, I'm addicted. Yes, I'm hooked. I'm, I'm hooked on the pain as well. I don't know why, but uh, I might get maybe a couple more small ones, but nothing serious. I got to ask you this final question. You're the pride of Manitoba. The Jets are coming back, or maybe not the Jets. I, I heard that they're not going to use the name. That's kind of disappointing, right? As a native of Manitoba, that they're not going to use the Jets. Yeah, you know, I, I definitely think they should stick with the Jets. You know, it takes you back to the days, you know, what I mean, of, of Keith Kachuk and Timo Salani and and uh, Asenza and all, all the great guys there. Uh, I, I hope they name them the Jets, but if they don't, they don't. I'll still support the uh, whoever team the Winnipeg has in, in hockey. Well, great to see you back, and uh, good luck on Saturday night. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it.